Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses as we continue with Tarot Symbolism, the second numbered card, the High Priestess, La Pepes, by Manly P. Hall. An article taken from the All Seeing Eye, Volume 5, Number 4, January 1931. It was written in ancient days that when the time had arrived for wisdom to descend into the world, it assumed the form of a woman because in its male aspect it would be utterly beyond the comprehension of humanity. The second numbered tarot card therefore reveals to us the symbols and attributes of the heavenly wisdom robed in the vestments of the true Akasha and bearing the several symbols of the ageless truth. La Papas, which literally means the female pope, may be interpreted as the female father, for she signifies the secret doctrine, which is the wisdom of the infinite gone forth as the sun, visible to mankind only through its outer or symbolic form. In ancient symbolism, the term male was used to signify a literal or spiritual reality, but female implied that this reality was manifested through its negative part, i.e. its material and allegorical shadow, here then is expressed through its mikrava or vehicle, this vehicle, which is sometimes called the Queen of Heaven, is opposite in its significance to the third card, the Empress, who is the Queen of Earth. In Islam, it is declared that the Kaaba, or cubical shrine, is located upon earth directly beneath the true temple of God in heaven. La Papes signifies the eternal temple in the heavens, the sanctuary of the living truth. The Empress expresses the terrestrial ecclesia, the temple which is upon earth, hence the second numbered card represents the concealed wisdom which can only be known to such as have lifted themselves through the spheres or planes of the mysteries, while the third numbered card sets forth that outer aspect of truth which is discernible through the so-called facts of nature. The heavenly virgin is elevated upon a triple dais to signify that she abides in the first world. Her golden throne reminds the student that she is seated in the certainty of the sovereign sun. She is indeed the virgin clothed with the sun as opposed again to the third card which is the mother. La Papes carries the keys to the two creations or Kabbalahs. The silver key is sacred to Jehovah, the royal horn of the moon, and unlocks the mysteries of the first Adam. He who was made from the red dirt, the terrestrial man. The golden key is sacred to Nus, the golden light of the sun, and signifies the mysteries of the second Adam. He who is born out of the earthly man through the regeneration of the flesh, the heavenly man. This figure which the Egyptians called Isis also carries the book one half of which is concealed beneath her flowering robes. This book is the Torah, the mysterious cipher word of the Rosicrucians. The concealment of the book may be read two ways. The robe may signify either the spiritual nature which conceals the origin of every so-called phenomenal fact or it may signify the material sphere which obscures, because of the illusions of phenomena, a certain part of every reality. The sign of Mercury reminds the symbolist that the supreme wisdom is glorified and adored by pure reason or the highest intellection of the mind. The triple crown surmounted by a golden crescent should be carefully considered. The golden crescent is not the moon in this case, but the crescent of Venus, the Lucifer or light bearer of antiquity. The triple crown further denotes that wisdom is crowned by the dignity of the three loci.
but from the third or lower crown hangs the bell of illusion. Thus we infer that in the third or material sphere the face of truth is concealed. The mouth is left uncovered to signify that her voice may be heard through the initiates or adepts who at one time were referred to as the lips of the heavenly one. The pillars behind the high priestess form the hieroglyphic of Gemini, which in the secret traditions is the third logos or, more correctly, the seed of the thinker, the beginning of mind and consequently the genesis of knowledge. Here also is the crimson veil of royalty. She is the vehicle or manifester of the hidden king who dwells in the adytum behind the veil. The checkerboard floor under her feet ends at the pillars, as it represents the phenomenal universe with its alternations of active and passive elements. We have added to this symbol a little shield containing within it two crowns, one upright and the other inverted. The upright crown signifies the divine wisdom, the mother of mysteries, which Christ refers to as his mother, the heavenly breath. The inverted crown is the black virgin, Madlita, who is described by Edward Schuer as the temptress in the picture of initiation in the great initiates. This black woman again appears in one of the Kabbalistic plates of Eliphas Levi. See the history of magic. The black figure is unquestionably inferior or natural wisdom, which arises out of animal cunning, as opposed to the superior or divine wisdom, which is an emanation of the Logos. In the chemical marriage of Christian Rosencruz, and other alchemical works appears the allegory of the king and queen whose child is the mysterious homunculi or crystal infant. In this allegory, the moon signifies the second emanation of the Logos, called by the Buddhist Bodhi. The crystal man is the true mental image or permanent ego described as crystal because its purity and transparency has not been defiled by contact with the matter of the phenomenal sphere. There is a legend to the effect that the Christ in heaven was born of a spiritual virgin and later when he descended upon the earth he imaged forth his true divine origin by being born of a physical virgin. The heavenly virgin is the number two trump, but the Mari, or Mary, who bears the physical emperor, the fourth trump, is but the shadow or symbol of this celestial mother of mysteries. In these two women, we also find the true explanation of the presence of two feminine agents in the septenary of the planets. Venus may be regarded as the heavenly virgin and the moon as the terrestrial mother. To be continued. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.